get more protein. It's a phrase we hear a lot, one we're always super good at following through on, even when we're trying to eat healthy. Because the reality is that the standard American diet most of us are used to eating is shockingly low in protein. And often, even the foods we think are high in protein actually aren't. And that means that there's a very good chance most of us are walking around with a protein deficiency without even realizing it. So how much protein do you actually need? And how do you know you're getting enough? That's exactly what we're diving into in today's episode, why protein is such an essential piece of a healthy diet, the signs that you're not getting enough protein, and what you can do about it. Welcome to the Feel Better Live Free podcast brought to you by Thinlicious. I'm your host, Ruth Sukup, and here we'll talk about everything from the science of weight loss to practical tips for making your health a priority in the midst of a busy life. It's a little bit nerdy, a little bit funny, and a little bit revolutionary. So buckle up, friend, because it's about to get real. Hey there, and welcome back to the Feel Better Live Free podcast. Once again, my name is Ruth Sukup, and I'm the founder of Thinlicious and the creator of the Thin Adapted System, as well as the New York Times bestselling author of seven books. And if this is your first time listening, then you should probably also know that I am pretty much obsessed with one thing, helping women over 40 create freedom in your lives by transforming your health. I like to think of it as starting a health revolution, and that's really what this podcast is all about. It's about the freedom to feel your best, the freedom to not be controlled by food addictions ever again, and the freedom to confidently pursue all of your big goals and dreams because your health and your weight issues are no longer holding you back. And if that gets you excited, then I feel probably like it here. We like to call ourselves health rebels, and we are not afraid to question the status quo or do things a little differently. We're not looking for a quick fix, but a real sustainable lifestyle change that will actually work for the long haul. And if that's your goal, then you're in the right place. Today, we're going to be talking about protein and specifically about how to know if you're not getting enough and what you can do about it. But before we dive in, there's something that I want to mention really quickly. First, if you are new around here and you want to understand a little bit more about my own journey and how I got so passionate about helping women get healthy, then after you're done here today, you should definitely go back and listen to the very first episode of this podcast because it's basically the story of my own health journey and how I lost 40 pounds and how that led me to here and to start Thinlicious in the first place. And if you like that first episode and you want to know more about how our program actually works and whether or not it might be a good fit for you, then you should also know that I have put together a really great on-demand training video that you can watch called Healthy, Happy, and Free. It's really good, and it's totally free, and you can watch it by going to thinlicious.com slash happy. Once again, that's thinlicious.com slash happy. So definitely go do that if you haven't already. And then the last thing I want to mention really quickly is that if you're a returning listener and you have been enjoying this podcast, then I would absolutely love it at some point if you could do me a huge favor and leave a quick review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you like to listen. I love hearing your feedback and I love hearing what you think about different episodes and what you wanna hear more of. So if you have a minute to do that, I would be so grateful. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, let's just go ahead and dive into today's topic, which is all about protein and specifically the signs that you might not be getting enough and what to do about it. Because here's the thing, protein is a big deal. In fact, it's one of the main three macronutrients that our bodies need in order to function properly, along with carbohydrates and fat. And yet for a lot of us, it's the one that we tend to neglect the most, especially if you spent any amount of time following a low-fat diet or a plant-based diet or really just the standard American diet. Because the reality is that most of us don't get enough protein. And that is a problem because protein is essential for so many of the basic functions of our bodies. It's what our muscles and organs are made of. It's what helps us to feel full and satisfied after a meal. It's what gives us energy. It's what helps to regulate our hormones. And it's also what helps us to build and maintain healthy bones and skin and hair. 
So before we dig into how you know if you're not getting enough, let's talk for a minute about exactly why protein is so vitally essential. Because like I said a minute ago, protein is considered a macronutrient. And macronutrients are more or less the big guys, right? They're the, the things that give our bodies the energy to function properly. And again, there are three main macronutrients that we talk about, carbohydrates, proteins, and fat. And carbohydrates, I would describe those as basically the, the cheap fuel for our body, right? They provide quick energy, kind of like the gas that powers a car. So foods like bread and pasta and potatoes and rice are rich in carbohydrates. Proteins, on the other hand, are the builders of our body. They help us grow and repair our muscles, the skin, the organs, and you'll find proteins in foods like meat and fish and eggs and dairy. And then finally, fats are like the reserves of energy in our body, or what I like to call the premium fuel. That's what helps us keep, feel full and satisfied, and it's what helps our bodies absorb certain vitamins and what helps to regulate our hormones. So sources of healthy fats include things like avocados, nuts, seeds, and olive oil. And here's the thing. Conventional health advice has always sort of contended that we need a balance of all three macronutrients for our bodies to function properly, right? Carbohydrates for energy, protein for growth and repair, and fat for energy reserves. But the reality is that we don't actually need carbohydrates because if we eliminate carbohydrates, our body will automatically switch to burning fat for fuel, which is a process that's known as ketosis, right? So it's kind of crazy. There's these three macronutrients. They're all supposed to be super essential. But the one that we can live without is carbohydrates. Can't live without protein, can't live without fat. But in order to really understand why proteins are so essential, I think it's also helpful. And I'm gonna, I might go deep into the science today because I get, I kind of geek out about this stuff, right? But I think it's helpful to understand a little bit more about the way that our bodies process these different macronutrients and the foods that we eat. So first, there's something that's called oxidative priority that comes into play. And oxidative priority is sort of like a ranking system for our body to decide which types of foods or nutrients it will use first for energy, right? So think about it, right? Our body has priorities in which it will use all of these different foods and nutrients that come in. Kind of the way that we prioritize our tasks in daily life, right? Priorities are always good. So here's how the list goes, right? The first the first priority, right, at the top of the list is alcohol. And this is at the basically at the top of the list because alcohol can be harmful to our body, right? Our body doesn't need alcohol and our body wants to get rid of alcohol. So when we consume alcohol, our body wants to get rid of it as quickly as possible. The second thing on the list of oxidative priority is carbohydrate. Because, and again, foods like bread, pasta, fruit, right? Carbs are the body's sort of instant source of energy. And so it becomes the go-to source of energy. And your body, if you have, if you consume carbs, your body will always go to the carbohydrates first because they're super easy to break down and they provide quick fuel, right? That's why I call it kind of the cheap fuel. It's like the easy thing. Then there's protein. And protein, again, is important for repairing and for building and repairing our muscles, but it's not the, the thing that our body will go to first when it's looking for energy. Protein is more like a backup plan. And because the body prefers to use protein for things like muscle repair and growth rather than necessarily burning it for energy. And then finally, there's fat. And fat includes things like butter and oil and fatty foods. And fats are the last on the list because they take longer to break down and provide energy. So as long as you're eating lots of carbohydrates, right, your body won't go into fat burning mode. But when you are eliminating those from your diet, then your body will start to burn the fat instead. So why does this matter, at least in regards to protein? Well, oxidative priority matters because it's what helps our body make smart decisions about which foods to use first for energy. And by following this priority list, our body can efficiently use the right types of fuel to keep us strong and, and healthy. And so understanding that, right, understanding oxidative priority helps us to make better choices for optimizing fat burning and energy levels. But it also explains why as long as you're fueling your body with alcohol and carbs, right, your body's not going to be using protein and fat. And so that's kind of an important thing to go from a health perspective, like, oh, if I'm constantly eating these things, my body can't really use these other things. And that's also why in phase one of our TAS program, we 
advocate for a high percentage of fat intake, right? In the first phase of our program, we basically want to retrain your metabolism. And so you have to eat a lot of fat where your macro ratio is as high as 80% of your total carbohydrate or your total calories with very few carbohydrates. Because again, we're training your body to make that shift into fat burning mode. But it's also why when you get into phase two, we want to shift into more protein and a little less fat, right? Because now we want our body to actually be using the protein and burning our own fat that's in our body. And, but, but it's important. That's why we do that, right? It's important to understand that oxidative priority, but that's just the first piece that you need to understand. The second piece is something called, I told you I was going to get real nerdy today, right? This, it's called the thermic effect of food, which refers to the energy that our bodies use to digest, absorb, and process the food that we eat. So imagine your body as a machine that needs fuel to work properly, right? So when you eat food, your body has to do some work to break it down into smaller pieces and use it for energy. And the, this work requires energy too, just like when you use energy to chop firewood or to ride a bike uphill, right? You're using, you're using different quantities of energy when you're riding a bike uphill versus riding a bike downhill. And just like that, different macronutrients have varying thermic effects. And so proteins are the foods with the highest thermic effect, which means that approximately 20 to 35% of the calories from the protein itself are burned during digest digestion and metabolism. Uh, does that make sense? So you are actually burning calories while you're eating those foods. They have the highest burn rate. And so that means that consuming protein-rich foods can slightly increase your metabolic rate. Carbohydrates have a fairly low to moderate thermic effect, and that depends a lot on how refined the carbohydrate is, right? So the more fiber the carbohydrate contains, the higher the thermic effect will be because it takes more energy for your body to process the fiber. But highly refined carbohydrates and sugars have virtually zero thermic effect, right? It's super easy for your body to burn those. And so it doesn't burn any extra energy just to burn those foods. And then finally, fats have typically the lowest thermic effect because it's basically stored energy for your body. Your body just stores it until you need it. So, so why does this matter? Well, the thermic effect of food is important because it affects how much energy you burn while eating and digesting, digesting your food. And that means that eating foods with a higher thermic effect can actually help you burn more fat, which is also one of the big reasons why getting a lot more protein in your diet, right, is so critically important. Because if you are trying to lose weight and get healthy, you want to be eating more protein because that's not only keeping you fuller and helping to build your muscles and doing all these things, it actually is taking more energy for your body to burn it. And that's essentially the big takeaway here, right? The critical importance of getting enough nutrient-dense protein in your diet, especially if you're trying to lose weight and get healthy and reverse insulin resistance and balance your hormones and heal your body from the inside out. Because protein will not only provide so many essential micronutrients, it's also being converted into a higher form of energy, one that actually builds muscle and is also forcing your body to burn fat and work harder. And on the flip side, when we're not getting enough protein, it has a really big impact on our overall health and well-being. And yet a lot of times we don't even realize that protein is the issue. We just know that something doesn't feel right or that we're not seeing the results that we want and we're not really sure why. And that's why I think it's so important to talk about this, right? And to really understand the signs that you might not be getting enough protein so that you can start to make some changes and see real improvements in your health and in the way that you feel. So with that in mind, Let's go ahead and look at some of the most common signs that you might not be getting enough protein in your diet. The first and most obvious sign that you're not getting enough protein in your diet is that you're always hungry, right? Sign number one, you're always hungry. And I don't just mean that you get hungry every once in a while or that you have an occasional craving for a snack. I mean that you feel like you're hungry all the time, even right after you've eaten a big meal. And that's because often protein is the most filling and satisfying of all the macronutrients, right? It's what helps to regulate our appetite and keep us feeling full and satisfied for longer periods of time. So if we're not getting enough protein, we're way more likely to experience those constant feelings of hunger and never really feeling satisfied. Like that's why you can 
open up a bag of chips and just keep eating this, the whole bag because it's pure carbohydrates, right? There's nothing to it. And even though it's tons and tons of calories, they're never actually filling you up. And this is a big deal because when we're constantly hungry, it's a lot harder to stick to a healthy eating plan, right? And, and a lot more likely that you're going to end up overeating or that you're going to give into your cravings for all of the wrong foods. So if you find that you're always hungry or that you have a really hard time sticking to your diet because you just can't seem to get full or satisfied, that is a pretty good indication that you might need to up your protein intake. So that's the first sign. The second sign that you're not getting enough protein is that you're losing muscle mass or that you're having a hard time building and maintaining muscle, even if you're working out on a regular basis. And this is really a big one, especially for women over 40, because as we get older, it becomes a lot harder to build and maintain muscle mass, right? And a lot easier to lose it. And that's why it's so, so important to make sure that you're getting enough protein in your diet because protein is what our muscles are made of. It's what helps us to repair and rebuild our muscle tissue after a workout. It's what helps us to maintain our strength and energy levels. And so if you are noticing that you're losing muscle mass or that you just seem like, man, I've been doing all this stuff, but I feel so flabby, right? And even if, especially if you're working out on a regular basis, then that's a very, very, very good indication that you need to get more protein. So that's the second sign. The third sign that you're not getting enough protein is that you're feeling tired and lethargic all the time or that you're having a hard time getting through the day without needing a nap. And again, this is a big one because protein is what gives us energy. It's what helps to fuel our bodies and keep us going. And so when we're not getting enough protein, that's when we're way more likely to experience those feelings of fatigue and lethargy. And this is especially true if you have been following a low carb or a ketogenic diet, right? Because when you cut out all of the carbohydrates from your diet, your body has to find another source of energy. And that's, that source really is going to be protein. Uh, that's where the energy is going to come from, you're, right? You're, get, you're burning fat for fuel too. That's important. That's what happens when you're in ketosis, but you still need the protein. And so if you're not getting enough protein, then you're going to have a lot less energy to get you through the day. And obviously this is a huge deal because when you're tired and lethargic, it's a really hard to be productive. And then it's way more likely that you're either going to end up not exercising, right? Not going for the walk or not cooking a healthy dinner or not doing all the things that you need to do to take care of yourself. So if you find that you're feeling tired and lethargic all the time, then that is yet another very good indication that you need to get more protein. The fourth sign that you're not getting enough protein is that you're not seeing the results that you want, right? Whether that's weight loss or improved muscle tone or just an overall improvement in your health and well-being. And this is a big one, too, because when you're not getting enough protein, it's having a very big impact on your ability to lose weight and get in shape. And what will happen a lot of times is that, and I see this happen all the time, right, especially when people and when people go on keto, right? And you're like, I'm going to go on keto. I'm going to eat all the fat. I'm going to not eat very much protein and not, not eat any carbohydrates. And, and at first, it's great, right? It feels great. You lose a bunch of weight and you think, oh, my gosh. And then all of a sudden, you're going to hit a plateau. You're not going to continue losing weight because now your body's getting too much fat and your body can't burn any more fat because you're getting too much fat. That's why our program is not considered keto, right? Because yes, there's a low carb component to it, but you need to have enough protein because protein is what helps to regulate our metabolism and keep it running smoothly. And it's what helps to burn fat and to build muscle. And it's what keeps us feeling full and satisfied so that we're not overeating. We're not giving into our cravings for all the wrong foods. So if you are not seeing the results that you want, whether that's weight loss or improved muscle tone or just that overall improvement in your health and well-being, then it's a pretty indi good indication that you need more protein. And then the fifth and final sign that you're not getting enough protein is that your hair, your skin, and nails are suffering. And this is because protein is what helps to build and maintain healthy hair, skin, and nails, right? It's what gives our hair that shine and skin our healthy glow. And it's what helps to keep our nails strong and prevent them from breaking. And so if your hair looks really dull or it starts falling out or your skin is breaking out or your nails are really weak and brittle, then it's probably a pretty good sign that you need to start getting more protein. And again, this is very true if you have been following either a low-fat or a plant-based diet, because a lot of times those diets don't provide an adequate amount of, 
of protein. But that can also happen, like I just said, that can happen if you're doing a ketogenic diet, right? And you're not getting enough protein. And they can also be lacking in a lot of the other essential nutrients that our bodies need in order to function properly. So if you're experiencing any of these five symptoms that we just talked about, right? If you are always hungry, you're losing muscle mass, you're feeling tired and lethargic, you're not seeing the results you want, or you're noticing that your hair, skin, and nails don't look good, then it's probably a very good indication that you need to get more protein. The question is, of course, then how do you do that in a way that's healthy and sustainable and that will actually help you to see some real improvements in your health and well-being? Well, the good news is that it's really not that hard to increase your protein intake. You just have to be more intentional about it, right? The reality is that we are so accustomed to eating a carbohydrate-dominated diet that we often assume we're getting a lot more protein than we really are. And not only that, a lot of times we have this idea that certain foods are high in protein when they're actually not, right? So for instance, eggs. We, th we all think eggs, oh yeah, eggs are high in protein, right? An egg only has six grams of protein, which isn't terrible, right? It's not zero, but it's also not all that much. And peanut butter, well, delicious and a great source of healthy fat, only has about eight grams of protein per, se per serving. Where, but people still think that peanut butter is really high in protein, right? Peanut butter is a great healthy fat, but not necessarily a great source of protein. Same thing with cheese, right? Cheese is also delicious, also a great source of healthy fat but it only has about seven grams of protein per serving. And that means that if you're having a breakfast, like say you're having a breakfast of a two egg omelet with cheese and you're thinking in your head, you're like, this is so good. I'm having a high protein breakfast, right? Low carbohydrates. It's actually not that high in protein. And while it is definitely not the worst thing that you could eat for breakfast by a long shot, right? It's way better than having a bowl of cereal. Also only giving you 19 grams of protein for that meal when you actually want to be shooting for at least 30 to 35 grams of protein per meal. So what's the easiest way to increase your protein intake? Well, this is probably going to upset the vegetarians, but it's to make sure that you're eating meat at every single meal. Meat is by far the best source of nutrient-dense protein on the planet, okay? It just is. Think about it, right? A six ounce chicken breast or a six ounce steak or a cup of ground beef, all of which are kind of a normal serving, all of those things contain about 45 grams of protein. And that's what you would eat in one meal, right? You'd have a cup of ground beef if you were having chili or something like that, or if you were having just a chicken breast with some vegetables on the side or a steak, that would be six to eight ounces, 45 grams of protein for six ounces. And not only that, Meat is, again, one of the most satiating foods you can eat. So if you're eating a meal with plenty of protein in it, then you're going to stay full for much longer. It's You're going to be kicking in that thermic effect of the food. You're going to be burning more calories just to digest that food. So it, it's, just, it's just incredible, right? Like you're not going to find anything better than meat. Although seafood is a close second, right? Seafood is also a great source of protein, especially fish that's high in omega-3 fat, fatty acids like salmon or tuna. A six ounce piece of salmon has about 34 grams of protein, while a can of tuna has about 40 grams of protein. Five jumbo shrimp have 25 grams of protein, right? So those are all really, really good sources of protein. Some, some dairy products are also fairly high in protein and can help you get over the target, but I wouldn't rely on dairy alone, right? So a cup of unsweetened Greek yogurt has about 23 grams of protein, and a cup of cottage cheese has around 25 grams of protein. So pretty good, but not as good as the meat. But if you're really looking to up your protein intake in a healthy and sustainable way, meat is definitely way to, to the way to go, right? We've kind of gotten out of the habit of eating meat for every single meal, but that's the way, that's going to be the easiest way to get at least 35 grams of protein for every meal, right? You want over 100 grams for the day, which means getting 35 to 45 grams of protein for every meal. Um, and yes, I know all the vegetarians will tell me, oh, well, there's lots of other ways to get protein that don't include meat. Things like tofu and tempa and lentils, but the reality is that those foods are also pretty high in carbohydrates. So you have to eat a lot more of them to get the same amount of protein as you would for meat. For instance, six ounces of tofu only contains 14 grams of protein, right? So you'd have to eat almost a full pound of tofu to get the same amount of protein as you would from a six ounce piece of chicken. 
And on top of that, a lot of plant-based proteins are actually incomplete sources of protein, which mean they don't contain all of the essential amino acids that our body needs in order to function properly. And it's why so many vegetarians have so many health problems, right? You feel great at first. And then as your body starts to miss out on some of those essential nutrients, you start to feel worse and worse. And I've talked about this before, right? I've talked about how I was a vegetarian for 28 years, so I'm not just making stuff up. And I started eating meat again because, right, because I didn't feel good. And I've, I've actually recorded a whole episode about this. So if you want to hear more about it, you can go and listen to that. But honestly, I'm just not a big fan of the protein options in a plant-based diet, especially, especially all of those highly processed franken meat crap foods the food industry has been trying to shove down our throats these past few years, right? Like the impossible burgers and all of that crap. Honestly, it makes me cringe when I think about all of the soy and a crap food that I ate for so long, believing that it was healthy. And now when I look back and I realize how protein deficient I must have been for so long. Sorry, there's just nothing that's going to be as good for you as real high quality meat. So more meat for sure. But again, you got to make sure that you're actually getting an adequate amount of protein at every meal. That's like I said, 35 grams of protein per meal or at least 100 grams of protein for the entire day, right? More is better. And of course, the best way to make sure that you're getting enough protein is to actually track it, right? To actually pay attention to it, to mark it down, at least for a little while so that you can get a better idea of how much protein you're actually getting. Because again, often we think we're getting way more protein than we actually are. It's pretty eye-opening to see how little you're actually getting in a day. So what about protein powders and supplements? Is that a good way to get more protein? Well, yes and no. I'm not a huge fan, right, of protein powders. I'm not a huge fan of anything that's not real food. So that you, there are some high quality collagen protein powders or high quality grass fed whey proteins out there, and they're not terrible, right? It can be a good way to get a little extra protein into your diet, especially if you're not eating meat at every meal. And I do say high quality because not all protein supplements are created equal. A lot of times there's some really crap ones, right? Cheap mass-produced protein powders that you'll find in the grocery store or on Amazon have tons of fillers and artificial ingredients and artificial sweeteners, and they're just not the best option for your health. But even if you're using a really high-quality protein powder, I don't recommend relying on that, right? That shouldn't be your main source of protein. Real food should always come first. So, But those are a few things that you can try if you're looking to increase your protein intake in a healthy way, which after this episode, I definitely hope that you are. But the good news is that once you do start to get more protein in your diet, you're probably going to notice some very significant improvements in the way that you feel and in your overall health and your overall well-being. You're going to have more energy. You're going to feel more satisfied after your meals. Your hair and your skin and your nails will start looking healthier. You're going to have an easier time losing weight and building muscle. And you're just going to feel a lot better in general because protein is a big deal. It is one of the most essential nutrients for our bodies. And it plays such a crucial role in all the basic functions that keep us healthy and happy. So if you're not making protein a priority in your diet, then I would definitely encourage you to start. Your body is going to thank you. All right, friends, that about does it for this episode. I hope that you found it helpful and that it gave you some good insights into why protein is so important. If you have any other questions or if there's anything else you'd like to know, then definitely feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or in our Health Rebel Facebook group. And then again, be sure to hit subscribe or follow on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you like to listen to be notified of new episodes. And then I will see you back here very soon for another new episode.